We are ready to pass. Yes. Uh, thank you. The meeting is now live. Uh, Dr. Edge, um, it's good always to sit at your feet. And I loved so much when I allow me, my good professor and leader, to put on my Nigerian outfit mm. before we can. Thank ahead. you. Mm. Yes. Um, thank you, family and friends. Uh, before I give uh, Dr. Edge to do the proper introductions and tell us what we're doing today, I'm so excited. I am not only a son to Dr. Edge, but I'm also his student and I'm also um, like his firstborn son because Jeff comes after me. So that gives me the right <laughs> and the credentials to claim uh, the airship and the sonship. Well, you know, something very interesting about today's uh, topic. Uh, our host is Dr. H. We are doing the letter H. And my name is Pastor I. I comes after H. Hey, so this is quite, <laughs> quite interesting. So let me not take away the um, statue for my good doctor, my father, my professor, as well as my mentor. Uh, he was a youth director. He took me through youth ministries when I was at school. And I'm sure he's very excited to see the things that he's imparted on us. Mm. Uh, to us doing it the way that we have been doing. Well, uh, allow me to also say, uh, sorry for the technical glitch that has just happened. We were just trying to make sure that you get the best of uh, what we need to present on today. But before I labor you much, allow me to hand over back to uh, the proprietor, the initiator, and the visionary of this one anotherness concept that has taken the world by storm. A concept that hinges on nothing else but Ubuntu, Ubuntu, Ubuntu. We need to be one. And I like this. Uh, Dr. H, before I give it to you, remember at one time you once preached a sermon and you talk, 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 talked about a lettuce and how we should let us, I mean, <laughs> really wants us to come back together. I will never forget that sermon. I know you've preached about a hagios, you've preached about all these Greek ones, but the one that sticks best in my memory is let us, taken from the concept of a lettuce. So my good doctor, mm -hmm. I hand it back to you to give us the formal introduction and um, help us sell through uh, what we are going to discuss today. The good doctor. Thank you very much, Pastor Ivan Quatringa. May I officially take this time to greet all our friends of one anotherness here locally, regionally, internationally. We are a family and uh, we share one thing in common, that is our faith in our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Today, before we discuss further on what we are going to discuss about, I have the honor and the privilege to welcome and introduce to all our friends of one anotherness, our guest of our honor, uh, Pastor Ivan Quatringa, who is popularly known as Uncle Sekuru Ivan. He is the current youth director from the East. And you know, those from the East are the wise. And the pastor Ukwatiringa comes from that direction, East Zimbabwe Conference, where he serves as the current youth director. Pastor Ukwatiringa, we have had time together in the classroom outside the classroom. And once again today, I have the honor to share the stage with him as we co-present it together. He has displayed a rare gift of both telling and writing exciting, captivating children's stories. You can't afford to miss either of his stories when he's given that platform. He is married to our beloved sister, Silindiwe, both him and the wife 
are blessed with two beautiful children, uh, Shekanaya and uh, Shaina. God has blessed them with these two. And uh, Pastor um, Ivan has um, had an honor to name these two uh, special kids, special gifts that God has given to him. If I'm correct, he will have to correct me, but I think I'm correct. He has named them uh, from the Hebrew. These, these names are coming from the Hebrew uh, 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 culture. That's a mindset of a, a Hebrew. Thank you, Pastor, for taking us back uh, to the Hebrew culture. Before uh, we go further, allow me to ask our beloved guest of honor, Pastor Quatringa, to welcome and greet our viewers out there. Pastor, go ahead and greet our viewers. And as you do that, remember that as we interact with our viewers, discuss with our viewers, this is an interactive platform, Pastor Quatringa. And since it is an interactive platform, you have the privilege and the opportunity to interrupt if you feel there are some other facts, points that you may need to bring uh, to the uh, platform. Viewers, our guests, our, our friends out there, thank you very much for your patience. Just wait for us to put our things together. We are ready. May God bless you as we take you through uh, letter H. But before I say much on letter H, may I also ask Pastor Quatringa to welcome you and uh, say one or two things. Over to you, sir. Well, friends, thank you so much. I did know that my good lecturer would actually give me such an honorable um, welcome. Thank you so much, uh, my good doctor. And like you rightfully said, how can I sit at your feet and fail to name my kids in the Hebraic uh, culture? And um, that's what has motivated us to Shekinah, by the way, is the glory of God and Shekinah is the beauty of God. So our viewers from Zimbabwe, Angola, uh, China, Dubai, wherever you are across the globe, we want to say welcome to this beautiful pl uh, platform where a concept we discuss, which tells us that even though it might be in different uh, places, but we're still brought together in one anotherness to see what we can do to make this global village a better place. And today we are centering on the letter H. I will not preempt what it is, but Dr. H will tell us what the letter H brings to us before Pastor I, which comes after the letter H, mm. is able mm. to expound what we are on today. Thank you, the good doctor. So all viewers, Thank you wherever you're coming mm. from, you are welcome and let's stay blessed. Thank you so much. Pastor Ivan, you have rightly said it, that we are looking at two special letters, one after the other. And today we are looking at letter H, which is linked with the host who is popular known as Dr. H, who happens to be a host. And also some uh, call him Pastor H, both in the classroom and in the church uh, circles. I feel honored to have our beloved pastor uh, co-host this very uh, important um, uh, study that is before us. Letter H, which is our study for today, is the seventh letter in the Greek alphabet order. Seventh letter in the Greek alphabet order. And uh, the lower case of letter H in the Greek is referred as eta. That's the lower uh, letter of uh, uh, letter H is known as eta. And it is used to represent conformal time in cosmology. By conformal time, I'm referring to the relationship between redshift and distance. I'm taking you back to physics. 
I know some of us, we, 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 we ran away from physics and we opted for something, but the uh, ETA has something to teach us about physics. It means conformal time, which is the uh, uh, relationship between redshift and uh, distance. And uh, in business, ETA uh, is used uh, to refer to elasticity, elasticity. By elasticity in business or in economics, most of our viewers are business people. Elasticity uh, uh, means the degree that uh, uh, consumers or producers uh, use when they want to change, when, when there is a demand to change in pricing. Let's suppose there is an issue of pricing and then uh, elasticity comes into play. But uh, in Greek, letter eta, as we have already seen, will be our study uh, for today. It means having compassion one to the other, having compassion one to the other. This is according to First Peter 3, verse 8. And when you look at the, 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 the word having, that's a, 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 a continuous action that is required, Pastor Ivan, from each one of us. We are called to have compassion, not only for a day, but to continuously have compassion one to the other, particularly in a world where people have a lot of problems. May I also quickly mention something uh, that was said by Dalai Lama. He has this to say, Dalai, Dalai Lama. He says, love and the compassion are necessities. They are not luxuries. Without compassion and the love, humanity, viewers, Pastor Ivy, we cannot survive. We need to be compassionate to one another. He says these are not luxury. They are not a want, but they are basic human necessities. Because of that, I just want also to define what compassion is all about. Compassion is a deep awareness of and a sympathy for another suffering accompanied by the a desire to do something about it. You just don't look at someone who is going through some challenges, going through some misery, going through some problems, and then you just look at him and then you just say, sorry, no, you go deeper than that. You act, you do something, you, you alleviate him, you, you pull him, you release him from the challenge that he, he may be going through. Pastor Alvin, uh, Ivy, Quadringa, why don't you then take us through the four uh, cardinal points of compassion? Over to you, sir. Thank you, my good doctor. You know, I at one time I felt like I'm back at Seleucus sitting on those benches as he took us through the Greek lesson, and that was quite exciting. Uh, I will not go back into the Greek because I think we have done more than justice. Uh, to really expound on the uh, on the letter H, but uh, let me allow me let me start with the uh, your point of departure, which is the book of First Peter chapter three verse eight. The verse says, "Having compassion for one another, love as brothers, be tender-hearted and be courteous." I cannot overemphasize what you have actually mentioned that the word "having" is showing a perpetual, a perpetual that is like it's not an event but it is actually a lifestyle. The issue mm -hmm. of compassion, you know, that deep heartedness, that uh, tender heartedness, that cautiousness, that wanting to uh, alleviate people from their problems should not be an event. In other words, mm -hmm. one, anotherness, one anotherness should not be a day where in 365 days we are saying, ah, on the 1st of June, we are celebrating one anotherness. No, one anotherness is a lifetime 
perpetual activity where all these things that Pastor Dudu was talking about forgiveness, we are bringing them to say these must combine like mm -hmm. a lettuce, it must come together and make mm -hmm. a lifetime perpetual. Uh, thing that happens within us. So this is where I want to uh, depart from. But as we do so, we have put aside four points that we want to overemphasize today. However, allow me to suggest that as we emphasize these four, this is not exhaustive in themselves, but we are saying these four form a foundation that mm -hmm. talks about the deep heartedness that should uh, exude from us as we see people who are in deep trouble. Uh, let me mm. congratulate you, uh, our visionary for the one anotherness uh, movement uh, and say, there is never a time where one anotherness was necessary. Mm -hmm. However, in these unprecedented times, we need to extol one anotherness more than anything else. Mm. Because not only in Zimbabwe, you know, there was a time when Zimbabwe and a few other countries were the only countries who were in dire need. But currently, the whole globe is actually mm. in a state of need. And we need someone who is so compassionate, someone who has that celestial, that divine attribute in them to be able to lift people from their state of misery uh, and do it perpetually. Now, of the cardinals we are going to talk, um, I'm going to talk about one. I'll also ask the good doctor to come in and then we can go ahead. The first one is we should have compassion uh, on others because God has compassion on us. Hey, mm. you know, the reason why we are called Christians, it means that as Christians, we follow after someone and this someone is Christ. And when we had failed to have compassion one on another, remember the first children who were born, the brother killed another brother, simply because of jealous and hatred. But mm. all this in the passage of time happened for quite some time until our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ says, okay, the best thing for me to do as their Lord and Master, their Savior, and the author of Compassionate, and the author of this thing that brings us together, I must show them the way. So Christ had to be born of a woman and leave the dusty streets of, um, of, of Palestine just for one good reason, to show us how it is done. Not mm. only did he even show us how it is done, but he also made it fall upon our hearts as beautiful words, wonderful words fell out of his mouth. And he would tell parables of compassionate, of how we ought to take care one on the other. Remember the book of Luke chapter 10 when he talks about the good Samaritan, how that man showed compassion and how heaven had emptied itself for God himself to actually show us the way we ought to treat one another. By the way, by the way, we have overemphasized that with compassion, we find our fellow men in dire stress. But mm. even when we are not in dire stress, we still need to be compassionate one for another. <laughs> Dr. H, you know, uh, yes. I, I know it's a, just, it's, it's a story that we always used to hear when we were kids. They say mm. there was this man who was so rich that every time he was walking, he was walking, you know, especially here in Africa where you need a lot of, a bundle of money for you to walk around with. So he used to tie it with the rubber band. So he had about uh, 50,000 of our African knots, a mm. bunch of tied with a, a rubber band uh, so that they don't lose uh, and fly away. So as he was walking, he met his uh, gray, um, uh, well, I, I don't know, you know, English sometimes fail us. Uh, but the good thing is you took us through languages. But, you know, sometimes there are things that are difficult, difficult to express in another, another language. Yeah. Uh, like, how do you say, umkana or kwenda umbangu, kutsoka umbangu. Anyway, what I, want to, what I want to express is, uh, he had so much, and he met his, um, his uh, muzukuru, um, what's what's the word in english is it is it a uh, nephew or niece nephew yeah mm. nephew he met mm. his nephew the nephew was struggling my pastor mm. he had his shoe that he had actually opened its mouth you know that's mm. the language i'm doing transliteration now the yeah. shoe had its mouth open you could actually see the stockings if he had stockings actually you could actually see the toes inside the shoe because it was mm. open when the old man saw that he took out, a, you know, he opened his jacket, pulled out this bunch of 500 African knots. When mm -hmm. the nephew saw the uncle open that, you know, his heart was so merry and he said, oh, what? My uncle wants to give me money to go and buy another pair of shoes. 
And guess what the uncle did? He removed the rubber band, put back the money, and gave the young man, said, hey, tie your shoe so that it does not show up. And the boy was like, oh, uncle, you were supposed to buy me a pair of shoes. Mm-hmm. This is what mm-hmm. compassion is all about. What That's another means is not asking us to continue to be elevated whilst we demote others to another level, but mm-hmm. it is raising other people to become to the level where we are so that mm-hmm. they and us are in the same uh, issue. You know, there's a story that I like uh, we find in the book of Matthew chapter 18. Uh, it's very sad at the same time, it has made me to realize that we need to elevate people, move them from their, uh, from their gutter most and bring them to our uppermost so that we enjoy what God has put for everyone else. Remember, the resources that God has given humanity, if we were going to put the concept of one anotherness, no one would be yes. suffering today. But our mm-hmm. compassion level has fallen from its epitome right to the bottom of it. You remember the story of that, um, the story of the slave who went to his master and said, hey, you know what, master, you know, I can't pay the, um, well, let me not use denarius because we are now, I want to con- contextualize it in the context of mm-hmm. Says, You know what, master, I can't pay that one US dollar that I owe you. Uh, please, please forgive me. You know, the money that I, and I've got a big family and there's coronavirus. I need to buy sanitizers. I need to buy food. And, and the master says, okay, fine. Because you have cried so much, I will write off your day. Why? Because the master had compassion on you on his slaves, on his his worker, and says, okay, because you have appealed to me, and because I am moved with the one thing that was explained, you know, uh, well, let me not, I wanted to go into what we're discussing about elasticity prices, you know, the mechanical, uh, the scientific and what, but I don't want to chase people away from this. Let me stick to what I know. (laughs) You know what? I want to, I I have compassion over you. And because you have shown me that you are at my mercy, and because God has showed me that forgiveness, which doctor, uh, which the doctor in making, Dr. Skumbuzo Dube in making mentioned, I am going to forgive you. And I am going to show compassion over you. I would also want you to enjoy life as I do it. So go, but as you go, remember there's someone who is in a lesser situation than yours, go Mm -hmm. and do the same to them. Now, this guy goes to and sees a friend who owed him 20 cents, not even uh, qualified to be in the the currents of dollars. Since the man says, ah, my brother, things are difficult. You know, COVID-19 has coronized us. We can't move anyway. I can't do the deals that I need to do. So I've not even gathered anything to give it to you. So would you be, he says, my boy, I'll teach you a lesson today. I am mm. going to show you what I am made of. If you have never <laughs> seen Tarat, today you will see real Tarat. And the man was not merciful to his fellow man for something as small as a, twin, as a 10 cents. Mm. When the master had that this man could not even show an ounce of compassion. He says, what should I do with this man? I have showed you compassion for greater things, but for small things, you were not able to render the same compassion. And you know the story of what happened to the man he was going to But what we are basically saying is, God, our father of all comfort and compassion, has shown us that while we were yet sinners, he was willing to die for us. We were like the Samaritan. Uh, we were like the some. We are like you know the Samaritans and the Jews. They never had some cohesion. They were not living like one anotherness. But because of compassion, he broke all the chains and all the customs and the rituals and brought them together. And says when compassion comes into place, whether you are born in China whether you were born in India, whether you speak Ndebele, you speak Shona, Zulu, mm. Sestwana, whatever it is, compassion is one attribute that helps us to blend the concept of one anotherness. My good doctor, mm. maybe just a thought or two uh, before we go Thank to- Thank you Kandis. very much. I think you have said it well. May I just um, come in and say something on the very parable that you have unpacked so well. That one of Matthew 18, uh, where Jesus told a parable 
as he was uh, emphasizing on the need for each one of us to have compassion, to have pity for each other. What I pick from that parable is the word master. The master was able to be moved with compassion. The master was able to release this guy who owed him 10,000 US, like you said, let's bring it to our context. He also went ahead, forgave him. So what I see here, Pastor uh, Quatringa and our viewers out there, is that he, the master operates at the level of compassion. Whereas the one who then was forgiven, who was a slave, was operating at a level of someone who was very cruel. So my message to each one of us is that let us operate at the level of a master. Let us operate at the level of a king because we are no longer slaves, but we have been raised by Jesus. And he has given us a status of sonship and a status of being uh, his daughters who are ready for his kingdom. Hence, in our families, we must not operate at a, slave, at, a, at a level of a slave where we are very cruel with the fellow human beings, where we are very mean uh, when we interact with the other fellow human beings, but we must operate at a level of a master. Those who are operating at a level of a master are kind, they are very lovely, they are very uh, forgiving, and they, 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 they have pity, and, and, and they have compassionate for each other, and they are very merciful. And uh, Jesus says, if we claim to be his followers, we therefore have to emulate him. And uh, by referring to the master, he was referring to himself, that each one of us as sinners, we, had to, we, we, we owed God a lot when we fell into sin. And the God could have uh, uh, let us in our, in, our, in our fallen pity, but he had to come down, identify with us, and they removed us from the pit of sin, and here we are. Today, we are free. So my message to our viewers out there, let us operate at the level of a master. Pastor Ivan, one thing that I also wanted to check with you is that uh, of late, there was some injustice that uh, happened in America. And also, I think recently, uh, I hear there was also a, a woman that was mistreated in South Africa. And these things are happening around us. Should we as Christians remain silent or we can be the voice for the voiceless? I don't think God can be happy with us that we are talking about having compassion for one another, but we just theorize. But I think the, the, the purpose of one another is why we, 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 we felt we should have a, a, a family that says we want to be there for each other. This family of people who are saying we want to be there for each other, they want to move from a theoretical uh, point of view and they go to a level where there are people who are full of actions, that those who are uh, uh, oppressed and those who are mistreated, either in the form of racism or in the form of tribalism, I don't think those uh, 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 isms can be tolerated among those who claim to be Christians. What, what, what do you say on, on, on such uh, 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 vices that are around us? You know, life, life is, a, is a battle between virtues and vices. And uh, one author that I like to always refer to, he says, one thing that will uh, carry this um, world, this globe that we are talking about that must come into in agreement and in unison mm. is not the uh, good words that were spoken in good times. Because the silence of our friends in times like this, mm. let us go. 
you were talking about orthodox and orthopraxis where we are so much good in terms of preaching, but we don't do. <clears throat> Mahatma Gandhi once said, I could have easily become a Christian, but one thing that I made me not become a Christian is and Christians speak a lot, but they act less. So if you were going to go on my Facebook post, I have actually uh, joined the world in saying life matters, mm. regardless of color, regardless of language, regardless of social status. This is what one anotherness is trying to um, emphasize. Mm. Say, guys, life more than anything matters. We must live as a community of people who begin to see others grow to become better people. Uh, if you see, when I'm talking right now, I'm not as fiery as I was when I spoke the first point, because this is something that we are trying to achieve. Gone are the days when Christians must remain silent when injustice is going in this particular world. Mm. Yet people who do not know God speak against injustice. Our God is a just God, and mm -hmm. he will want us to do. And justice and compassion find each other. They come meet and kiss each other. Allow me to go to uh, Cardinal point two and three two. Uh, before I allow you to come in, then I'll conclude with the last one. Uh, I see you. our time is moving, but uh, to those under the dictates of our voice, we are saying, if ever there's a time when Christians must stand in solidarity is when injustice happened in our communities. Now, point number two, my good doctor says, Jesus was sincere in his compassion service. Um, what this basically is uh, drawing us to is, uh, let me bring in what you brought in the first time, the issue of uh, demand and want and elasticity. I will not explain that. I'll just pick what I, I heard from what you're saying. I think the good doctor said it. I'm not an mathematician. I'm not a scientist. <laughs> I'm not a theologian. I'm a storyteller. So I'll yeah. try to do it in stories. But I just want to pick something from elasticity. You know, for every, for every want, it warrants or it demands uh, something that comes in, in. That is what actually brings in the elasticity of how prices are determined and whatever it is. So borrowing from that thought, I want to say, even the desires and the wants of humanity in this current situation require, let me actually put the word, demand for mm. an equal response for mm -hmm. those who say we follow Christ. Very good. Compassion comes in a state where it is demanded. When we say demanded, we're actually saying it's a, when you declare that I am a Christian, we demand of you to mm -hmm. go and fulfill the want that is in society to alleviate the problems in humanity. Mm. But when Christ did that, he did it in a sincere, uh, uh, compassion way. You know, there are times, uh, allow me to express this. There are times where people have actually gone into a situation where people are in dire stress, but they did not go in for the service, mm -hmm. but we want them to be glorified. I don't know if you hear what I'm trying to say. Yes. When Christ came in to render service, which was demanded by the context, he came in a compassionate service and coming not for him to be seen and elevated, but for him to uh, pull out people in their uh, state and put them in a different level. You know, if you read the book of Matthew chapter nine, verse 36, it's a sorry situation where uh, the author says, but when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Mm. My good pastor, would you allow me to uh, be liberal with words as I uh, deliberate on Go this ahead. one? Go ahead. The problem with our contemporary men of God, MOG, pastors, bishops, um, is not an issue of service and compassion. It is a competition mm. to see which men of God, which apostle, which pastor, which mm. is doing something that elevates their names. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. But contrary to, you know, point one is saying our compassion should be detected by the compassion of our master, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When we come to point number two, it is actually saying this compassion must come as a service to the community, not as a way of elevating individualism. Right now, right now, uh, someone posted on their Facebook and they were asking, where are the men of God that have always asked us to render what we have? This is the time we need you more. Because when you come to us, we are in our state of comfort. Now that we are in dire stress and dire need because of COVID-19, where is the man of God to be seen? Now this separates the issue of compassion and rendering service to the people. When we do this out of service, even in times when we are called to stand, this is what is needed. When Christ saw humanity, he saw people who were loitering without a shepherd and he stood in the gap. Not even considering heaven where he left. He allowed himself to be messed up in the situation of humanity at that time for him to liberate us. One day, me and my wife were supposed to go for a wedding. Uh, by that time, we had one child, uh, Shekinah, the boy. We didn't have the daughter that we have. Uh, so my wife uh, uh, took Shekinah, she bathed him, she put him in his uh, best robes that he normally wears to church and function. And then I was also finished bathing. Then she decided to go and take a bath so that when she is done, we go for, for the wedding. When she came out of uh, the bathing room, my good doctor, she mm. kind of, you know what he did? He had gone mm. outside. So there was a pool of mud because it was in December. You know, in December it rained and what? So he was wearing a nice white suit, white shirt, white bow tie, white shoes. He was all cleaned up by my wife. She had put the best clothes on him. But white gets easily, it easily gets dirty. So he got dirty into the mud. When my wife came out of the bathing room, she was fuming with fury. And when I saw that my wife was now angry, you know what I did, my good doctor? Mm. I was also putting on my beautiful clothes. But because I knew that my boy was going to be beaten thoroughly by a mother, guess what I did? Mm. I also went into the mud where he was playing. And then I also started jumping on the mud and then I got dead. What moved me to do that? was I realized that my son was going to be beaten by the mother for doing what is not true. Mm -hmm. Now, this leads me into the next cardinal point. Mm -hmm. Yes. It says, although we hate sin, we ought to have compassion on sinners and strive to rescue them, being careful not to become entangled ourselves. Now, let me further explain this story that I was telling you. So when I got into the mud, I also then reached out to my son. When my wife came in, she could not beat my son because she realized that my compassion for my son had brought me to the level of my son. And because if she had to beat my son, she mm. also had to beat me also. Very good. But then she then relaxed and says, okay, guys, this is not fun. Please go and change. So me and my, this time I took my son. I went and I took a bath with him. I dressed him, I put on another good clothes, I put on good clothes. And then I said to him, boy, you know what I did that time? Hey, we were in trouble. Your mother could have easily beaten you and beaten me because we were in the doldrums of death. Hmm. But I realized that for me to come and rescue you, I need to be in your situation. But That's very true. Get out of this mud, go and wash so that we become clean and then she can appreciate my service to you. So friends, what are we talking about? In as much as we have friends and family who are in dire situations that need us to go and redeem them, we are not to go and stay in that mud. We are not supposed to be entangled in the situation where they are. We have to render service just like Christ did. Number two, when we strive to take our family, our friends, and our 
loved ones because of compassion out of their merry claim. We must then show them the right way to do the things, making sure that we do not fall in the same pit that easily besets us and become victim to the situation where they are in. So in these two cardinal points, I want us to learn two important points. I'll give the doctor to make a statement and then I'll come to the last point. After the last point, I'm just going to show you a, a short video. Uh, I left this last one especially for that. Yeah. Now, I friend, like that. friend, listen to this. Our compassionate acts are not for us to be exalted and extolled. Mm -hmm. Because this is a service that we are rendering. Mm -hmm. For a service, it actually means our compassionate acts are for the benefit of to whom we are rendering the compassion. If we render service, the people we render service to must move from the point where they are to becoming better. Actually, it will be best if they are where we are. Mm -hmm. Point number three, before we conclude with point number four, which is going to be the last one is even though we hate sin, we must be moved by compassion to go and redeem people out of the miry clay. If it means at times we need to find them where they are, let's not stay in the miry clay. Let's move them out of them. Tell them we got in this situation because we moved out of compassion. Now, let me put, let me put it in, in a very clear way that you understood. It did not require God to come and become man, but because of compassion, he left glory and honor and he lived the life of a sinner, died the death of a sinner on the cross, but he did not remain in sin. Mm. It was to show us that yes, you might be under the bondage of sin now, but I've come to show you that compassion is good enough to take us out of our situation. So my friends who are watching us on Facebook, those who are listening from across the globe, it is our due service to render service, redeem our family, our friends and our loved ones out of the situation of mighty clay of the sin and put them on the rock, which is Jesus Christ. But we ourselves must not remain there. The good doctor, uh, two words before we get to the last cardinal point. Thank you very much. I have a comment here from our beloved pastor, Pastor Ting Kanyezi. He has this to say, compassion is a divine trait or quality of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ in Matthew 10 verse 14 had compassion on people. The compassionate that he had, sorry, the, uh, the compassionate he displayed was Christ-like. And uh, hence, it uh, appeared and uh, drew people to him. This is how our pastor puts it. I want to appreciate this comment from our beloved pastor, and what you have already said, Pastor Latin. Uh, as far as point number three, where you are saying, we need to go out and mingle, interact with the sinners because we are moved by compassion. And because we are moved by compassion, we go to where they are. We don't wait for them to come to where we are. We go to where they are. And when we go to where they are, I like even how you, you put it that you had to identify with your son. So you identify with a sinner, but the intention there is to pull the sinner from the situation where the sinner finds himself or herself. But if we are going to stand aloof, and then we are calling them from our, 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 our comfort zones. I don't think, Pastor, we will be in a position to make a breakthrough. Another point that I also want to put across is that in, uh, one of our cardinal points, they say uh, the, 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 the compassion that Jesus displayed 
uh, he was moved with his sincerity. So in, in, in displaying the service that he did, there was that sincerity suggesting that he, he did not offer compassion as a way of maybe uh, winning someone, but he did it. That whether this person will accept him or whether this person will choose not to accept him, that one is still the choice of a human being. So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say as a church, as members of the church, we must not offer a service with an intention that we want to have these people join our church. We offer a service, whether we are giving them water, we must give them water, whether we have to give them food, now it's Corona time, people are starving, people are hungry. We must not take advantage of their situation. We must give them food, we must give them water. After giving them water, food or whatever, but the, the choice for them to follow Christ and become part of the very church that we are in, that remains their choice. They still have a choice not to choose Jesus, but we still have an obligation to fit them. Mm. That is deep, my pastor. Uh, the sincerity comes in the sense that you are not doing it to gain anything, yeah. but you are doing it to elevate to whom you are rendering the service. Allow mm -hmm. me to make a contribution um, outside the what we are discussing. I think you must, when you read the top fans, you must also read Pastor Nkanyezia. He also shares this. Uh, I think the first time yeah. I, I got Let's into, hear those. I the first time I got into encounter with this series, I saw it from a share from Pastor Kanyezi. So you know it's always good when you find uh, uh, peers, uh, people who are also sharing uh, what we are doing. So when you give top fans badges like we were doing the other time, please remember mm. Pastor Kanyezi. So thank you very much. <laughs> yes, yes, he's doing a wonderful job. Some of you of this uh, one another is through his shares. And he also shares this on WhatsApp uh, for your own information. So I also mm. want to encourage young people and those who are listening to say, uh, don't just sit on these gems of truth. Uh, if there's a way of sharing, uh, make sure you share so that other people get to know. Allow me to go to the last cardinal points. I see our time is almost coming to the end. Um, I'll say very little about this, but I just want to share with you what young people in East Zimbabwe Conference have done. Uh, when I also do the last cardinal point, it says, without compassion, yeah. religious observance is worthless. <laughs> yeah, repeat the, that one. Repeat yeah. that one. That's why, you know, that I know it's, very powerful. it was not number four, but I had to put it at the end because I yeah, wanted to that take is, away yeah. a point. That's says, the pillar. That's the pillar of our point. Without compassion, religion observance is worthless. You know, um, the, the, the book of James actually talks about, um, you know, religion without works and uh, how we do these things. And I think it must be Mahatma Gandhi. I didn't research on this one, but I think it was Mahatma Gandhi. Yeah, it was Mahatma Gandhi on his book that is called The Seven Deadly Sins, where he's talking about politics without um, principle, where he's talking about um, wealth without, and then it comes to religion and he says uh, religion without uh, acts of compassion. Mm. Well, we can't even compare, we can't even call it religion because religion is actually embodied in this essence of working for one another. Even mm. if, like the good pastor said, with sincerity, that even that person does not decide for what you hold as your dogma or your doctrine, but we still have to do it on the basis of humanity. So, mm. without compassion, religion observance is worthless. I would actually say faith without compassion is not worth dying for. Because point number one says our compassion is taken out of the compassion of Christ. The compassion of Christ actually led him not to have compassion alone, but the compassion was so powerful that he was willing to lay down his life for his friend. Aish! <laughs> you didn't hear what I said. Mm. For Christ, his compassion. In other words, we did not deserve that our maker would hang on that old rugged cross. But the statement says he was moved with compassion for them because they were looking like lambs and sheep without a shepherd. And he says, if it comes for me to actually render my life for them, 
This is the kind of compassion, whether they'll accept me as their Lord and Savior, but I'm willing to take the step where religion becomes worthy because I've rendered compassion. This is what we are talking about. Now, um, I just thought, because today we are talking about having compassion for one another, I just want to encourage young people. Uh, this is what young people in East Zimbabwe Conference have done. It's a project that they brought. We thought it was a good idea. And these young people have actually done things that we never thought young people. You know, I want you to listen to this. We got a hold of news that there was a children's home where they were living, about 21 children. And uh, their house had no security wall, they had no water. They had no... Now, some of the young people, now I want you to listen to this. Some of the young people who rendered a sincere service to this place changed the place so much that it became better than where they are actually staying. No, you didn't hear what I said. Mm. Their compassion drove them to change the situation of people that they were found in a dire stress. And they put them in a condition which is better than their own condition. This touched my heart. To say we still have young people who are willing to take people out of a different situation and place them in a situation that is better. Now, the video I'm going to show you right now was done by Pathfinders. This was done by Pathfinders. So, uh, good doctor, would you allow me to just share? I think it's about three minutes, and then, yes, I'll, and then I'll hand back to you. Let me quickly get to the video. Um, as I, okay, I think I've found it. I just need to. Growing up, listening to all the historical artifacts that have ever happened and perusing the pages of all the history books, I remember the story of the Great Wall of China. But this is not the wall I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about the Great Wall of Apopka. Thank you to Apopka Pathfinder Club for what you have done for us here in Zimbabwe, East Zimbabwe Conference at Kudakwashi Children's Home. When we came to this place as we adopted it in 2019, this place had no security wall. But because you guys decided to become the hands and the feet of Jesus, and you decided to put your acts of kindness right across the borders, over the seas, to come and help us here. All we just want to say is thank you. May the good Lord richly bless you. And may the God of heaven open a mountable amount of blessings for that which you've done for us. May God bless you. In our local language, we say, Tatenda Siabon. God bless you. Mm. So, uh, why did I share this? Uh, why did I share this um, video? Now, I hope you heard what I said. This was done by Pathfinders. Now, when we went to Kudakwashi, Kudakwashi is a children's home where there are about 24 kids who live with special needs. These guys had no security wall. They had no water running there. They, had, um, they were living in a three-roomed house. So a group of Pathfinders says, no, we can't uh, allow children to stay in this place. They helped gather resources, built a security wall, painted it and then other people also came in we put a ball and a solar and then there's water running through some of the people who came to change the life of these children where they are staying they don't even have a gate they don't even have a jura home. but because they were moved with compassion they went out of their way and did more than what they did for themselves without considering themselves but considered those to whom they were rendering a service. Challenge I want to give you our viewers who are watching from across the globe. One anotherness will never be complete unless we realize that everyone is equally important in the discuss of the concept of unity. We need to move from a place of me and I to a place of we, us, together. If you are going to help someone, leave them in a place where you'd say, even me, I'll be comfortable in this. As I hand over to my good doctor, we spoke about four cardinal points. 
we declared from the beginning, these are not exhaustive in themselves, but these are just pillars that build on the letter H, which says have compassion one another. Let me remind you as the good doctor is uh, waiting to conclude. Number one, we said, we should have compassion on others because God had compassion on us. While we were yet sinners, Christ came and died for us. Number two, remember, Jesus did the compassion service in the mode of sincerity. Not that he would be exalted, not that people would come to him, but because he, it had to be done. Number three, although we hate sin, we ought to have compassion in sinners, love them, and strive to rescue them from the situation of sin and leave them standing on that rock that is Jesus Christ. Finally, finally, without compassion, our religious observation is worthless. Let us strive to live a life of elevating fellow human beings that all of us, like a rainbow, know that each and every one of us is equally important. As I conclude, coronavirus has also brought a lot of gender-based violence. There's a lot of discrimination because of racial, because of ethnicity, because of various things. God never created man black, white, pink. He created man in his own image. Mm -hmm. Because he said, let us, create men in our image. And he created them male and female. No distinction by color, race, language. We are one in Christ. And this can only be fulfilled when we show compassion one to another. With these words, may the good Lord make you an instrument of compassion in this global world as the concept of one anotherness continues to ring in our hearts. My good doctor, over to you for the concluding remarks. Thank you very much, Pastor Quatringa. Our viewers, we conclude as follows. Let us follow Jesus Christ, who is our model when it comes to compassion. We have already uh, discussed how he demonstrated uh, compassion while he was here on earth. He becomes our model. He becomes our example. Hence, as we uh, uh, present compassion in our families, in our churches, in our communities, our model is Jesus Christ. Hence, if he becomes our model, let us go ahead and bring the lost sheep to the shepherd who happens to be Jesus. Let us feed the hungry who are struggling during this corona uh, virus uh, 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 pandemic that is around us. Let us feed them. And as we feed them, we are asked to do it in sincerity that we do it not expecting uh, something because we have offered a service, but uh, it is their right as human beings to be fed by us who happens to be Christians. And then we also have to do our best because again around us, there are those who are sick. Hence, we are asked, required, demanded, that we offer compassion. Let us be compassionate as God has been compassionate to us. Thank you very much for your time, viewers. Thank you very much, Pastor Quadringa, for your time, the insights, revelations, reflections that you have shared with us. We conclude with a special prayer from Pastor Quadringa. Pray for us, say. Thank you, viewers. Uh, shall we pray? Our Father who art in heaven, we thank you for a time such as this. Thank you for calling us to sit at your feet through this virtual um, presentation where we are bringing the concept of one anotherness. We have discussed other concepts before, 
but today we're talking about having compassion on those that you have created in your image. You have also reminded us that everyone was created special in your image. And because we are all special, you will require of us to be each other's, each brother and sister's keeper, to make sure that our brothers, our sisters, our loved ones, our friends have something to eat on their table. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving us this opportunity. We want to thank you for Dr. H. Lovu for the vision to be able to uh, start this movement where we're trying to bring uh, all of us into uh, unison and talk about taking care of each other. Thank you once again for the discussions that we uh, done not only today, but even in previous um, discussions. And those that are to follow, may they bring us together that we'll be able to say, truly the Lord has been on our side. To you, my beloved friends and viewers on Facebook, and if you're watching it from any other channel, or even from a uh, watch party, I say to you in final benediction, have faith in God, his promises are true. Have faith mm -hmm. in God, he has never lost a Peace in your heart and peace in your homes. Have faith mm -hmm. in God, all things are possible through him who gives us strength. Have faith in God, he is the father of all compassion. And he has shown us how we ought to be compassionate to one another. When all mm -hmm. is said and done, may all of us, our uh, name, let all the saints say amen. And amen. 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 Thank you very much once again, Pastor, and our viewers. Bye bye. Next Sabbath, same time. Okay. Yes. Thank, you. Thank you, viewers. Uh, it is an honor for me to sit again at the feet of my good doctor, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, I wish I would come back to Sulisi. And friends, if you have never been to Sulusi, wherever you are, make a trip, sit at the feet of this man. He will teach you a lot of Greek and Hebrew and your life will never be the same again. Once again, thank you. And thank you for joining the movement, One Anotherness. Make sure you share this video. Make sure you tell others that there is a program that is in the business of changing lives. God bless mm. you once again. Thank you. Thank you very much.